So we are moving to the next part of our chapter, which is power functions and absolute value. In this section, we will get familiar of different types of power functions and their graphical representations. So by looking at the graph, you could have an idea what function it is or vice versa. So we will start from monomials. So what is monomial? Monomial is just the power function f of x, which is represented as x to the power of m. So those kind of functions called monomials. So you can see here m is element of natural number starting from 0, which means that x to the power of 0, which is equal to 1, is also included to monomials. And uh, our domain will be all real numbers. Instead of n, we can put any natural number. So monomials could be, for example, x and x squared, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 4, and etc. All these are monomials. If we look at the graphic representations, we can differentiate them to the odd and even functions. We divide them just by looking at m here, so x to the power of m. So if m is an odd number, then the graph will look like this. So you can see here, here we have an example. So x is just a line and this is x to the power of 3 x to the power of 5 and x to the power of 7. And you can see that they are all symmetric with respect to the origin. And since they are odd functions, f of minus x will be equal to minus f of x that we already saw before. And um, for example, x to the power of m and m is an even number. When it's an even number, they look a little bit different. They look like this, and this is an x squared, this is x to the power of 4, this one is x to the power of 6, and this one is x to the power of 8. If we increase m, you see the pattern how the graph is changing. So this is an even function, and if you remember, f of minus x in this case will be equal to f of x. So graphically, they look like this. So in monomials, again, x to the power of m, and since m is a natural number, it means that m is positive. But what if m will be a negative number? How our graphs look like in this case? For that, we will have a look at negative whole exponents. So we're not talking about uh, any fractions, just the whole exponents. We already saw um, an example of monomials, the positive ones, and now we will have a look at the negative ones. Just like uh, with monomials, the symmetry of the functions depends whether the m is even or odd. They will look a little bit different. So for example, this one will be the odd, and this one will be even. If it's odd, this will be symmetric with respect of origin. And if it's even function, it will look just like inversed parabola. This is how x to the power of minus 2 looks like. So you can see tendency how the graph behaves when we increase m. If monomials had a domain all real numbers here, it will be a little bit different because domain in this case will be all real numbers except 0 because division by 0 is not allowed. All power functions that we revised so far had whole exponents, either positive or negative. If the exponent is not whole number, it is called a radical function. So if our power is represented by the fraction which is not integer, then we call it a radical function. Since negative bases with the fractional exponents aren't allowed, the domain of radical functions is only positive numbers and potentially zero. And so the radical functions are not defined for negative x. So the shape of the graph depends on the sign of the exponent and the ratio between n and n. So for example, if we have fraction in the power between 0 and 1, then our graph will look like this. So starting with square root of x or x to the power of 
half x to the power of 3 fourths and x to the power of 1 fourth. So if you can see here, for large values of fraction, the graph becomes less steep and tends towards infinity. It goes a little bit this direction. This is how you orient here. And uh, when m divided by n is larger than 1, our graph looks like this. So this one is x to the power of 5 seconds. This one is x to the power of 3 seconds. And this one is x to the power of 5 fourths. This one will be here x to the power of 2 and a half, let's say. We can say it's more than 2. And this here is a closer to 1. So you can see the pattern, how the graph changes the tendency. The large values of m divided by n in the graph becomes steeper and steeper and tends towards infinity. Both of these functions are monotonically increasing. When x is increasing, the function is also monotonically increasing towards infinity. The next form of radical function will be if our fraction is smaller than zero. So it will look like this. Again, we define radical function only for positive numbers. As you can see here, so this one is x to the power of minus 3 seconds, and this one is x to the power of minus 1 fourth, and the red one is x to the power of minus half or minus square root. As you can see here, as values of x in the graph increases, so we go towards infinity in this graph here, the graph flattens out and tends towards zero. This is how radical functions and monomials look like. Next we're going to move to the power function with coefficients. So first we got the familiar how different power functions look like and now we will have a look at a coefficient how our graphs will look like. So for example we have coefficient a which is minus 1. So if we have for example this is our um, parabola which is x squared and a is equal to 1 here so our coefficient is just equal to 1. And if we will change it to the minus 1, our parabola will end up looking like this. So it reflects the graph about the x-axis. So we take our parabola and just reflect it about the x-axis to the opposite direction. If we have absolute value of our coefficient larger than 1, then it stretches the graph in the y direction. So here, for example, we have 2x squared, we have x squared here, we have half x squared, and this one is minus 2x squared. If we increase a, then our graph will go further like this and like this, the more we increase a. And on the other hand, if the absolute value a is smaller than 1, then it will go to the opposite direction, like this becoming flatter and flatter. So next we will have a look at the graph of absolute value. We already saw it before, we will just revise it again. The absolute value function is obviously an even function, so for all real numbers x the equation minus x will be equal to x. This behavior we can also see it on the graph here, because the graph doesn't change when mirrored above the y-axis. 